When it comes to HMO valuations, there's so much misinformation in terms of how you can get them, how they're structured, how the calculations work, and when you definitely can't access that type of valuation. In this video, I want to break down those myths and give you examples also on how we took a property from £250,000 to in excess of £500,000 using this exact model. If you're watching for the first time, then welcome. My name is Saj Hussain. On this channel, I have three videos a week to ultimately help you get further faster in your property investing journey. So when it comes to valuation of property, there's really two key methods that people use in this country. One is the traditional bricks and mortar valuation, and the other one is what we call the commercial valuations or sometimes called investment values. Now, the holy grail in HMO property investing is when we can take a property, increase its value significantly because the income is generating, refinance the IE take on a new mortgage based on its higher value, extract all that cash, pretty much get all your money out and go again. But most people get this completely wrong and make a mess of it. The first model of valuation is the one essentially we want to avoid when it comes to HMO commercial valuation. That's the traditional bricks and mortar. And the one people get wrong and people get mistakes on is they don't really understand the difference between the two. So a bricks and mortar valuation is normally what you would get on say a traditional buy to let type of property where what the surveyor is coming out to do, they're valuing the property based on what it is to any other similar property in the area. And they'll refer to what's called comps or comparables. And what they're essentially doing, they're looking at similar properties of a similar style within the locality that has sold recently. And they use that as a guide to what your property would be worth. So for example, if number 10 down the street was sold for 100,000, and if uh, the one on the next street, which is very similar, was sold for 98,000, and one across the road was sold for 102,000, or within the last six months, then around £100,000 valuation is going to be fairly sensible and that's what they use and that's the guidelines that they'll use. So that's okay for your buy to let property but when it comes to HMO valuation we want to structure things in a completely different way and the reason for that is because what we're trying to do we're trying to get a much higher valuation but with bricks and mortar the way they're valued they're not designed to be valued on income. When trying to estimate a value of the property, what most people tend to do, they jump onto like Rightmove and Zoopla and they get a gauge for what's already uh, sold. They look at the prices, look at what the asking price was and it says sold subject to contract. They take a few of those samples and say, hey, that must be what it's worth. But remember, what the asking price of a property is has no relation to what something may have sold at. It's once the property is actually sold, it appears on the land registry, that data is available, then that's the information that we really want to use. The for sale prices, the asking prices, the sold subject contract prices, they are not really accurate guides for us and we can't really determine valuations based off those. So when it comes to tools like uh, mouse price that some people will use, what they'll do, they'll put the address in and mouse price will calculate a figure for you. But what mouse price and other tools like that are doing, they're doing what are called automated valuations. They're using formulas. They just use a, a calculation of different properties that might have been sold in the area that come up with a figure with what they think that property is worth. Again, they're not very accurate ways of valuing property. Really what you want to do is stick to the actual sold ones. Because at the end of the day, whose who's opinion of a valuation is the one that counts and it's the one of the RICS surveys. Your chartered surveyor, it's their opinion that matters and if you can do good research very similar to what they would do that means you're going to be much more likely to arrive at a figure that they'll arrive at and hence not be disappointed when the surveyor comes out and gives you a figure of what that property is worth. But remember we're talking about bricks and mortar valuations but that's not the way we want to do it. In a moment we're going to jump into commercial valuations which is really what we want to do when it comes to HMOs. That's how we can get our cash out. But if you're enjoying this content make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel as well and enable the notification bell because that way you're notified when we've got great videos like this being released so you don't miss out on any of those. The reason a commercial valuation is much more desirable in a HMO is because the end value would be much higher than it would be if it's a bricks and mortar. Earlier on when we were talking about bricks and mortar we are using comparables like the house next door, the one across the street that sold. But when it comes to commercial values, these are different because they are based on the income that they are generating. So we look at the total rent that that property would be collecting each month that you'll be generating. So let's say you've got six rooms, all the rent from those six rooms, 
over a year the gross rent that that house will generate you minus any running and operational costs that you have such as your gas electric water council tax a TV license, internet cleaners, gardeners, management, all these things are deducted off that cost because they're your operational costs apart from the mortgage and the number you left with at the end effectively is your net income of that property. So if you purchased it for cash, this HMO that was already running, minus those bills, that's what you'd be left with. Then what happens is a figure is applied to that as a yield as a multiplier sometimes it's referred to as a yield to work out what that property is worth so for example let's say we're generating thirty thousand pounds as a net income a year after cost and if it was a multiplier of 10 you simply times that by 10 that means you've got a valuation of three hundred thousand and it may be the house next door is only worth say two hundred and fifty thousand because it's bricks and mortar that's why the commercial values mean they can achieve much higher figures because it's all about how much income that property can generate now the key factors here are the amount of rent that the property is generating and also the yield that's applied now the yield that applied is varies from area to area and also it's a surveyor's opinion in terms of what they feel is the right yield to apply now the lower the number the higher the valuation will be and i'll give you an example in a moment in much more detail so you can understand what i mean by that So by now you probably realize a commercial valuation is much more desirable than a bricks and mortar on a HMO. But if that's the case, why do so many people get this wrong? Why is there so much misinformation? And that's because there's an assumption that you'll be eligible for this type of mortgage for your HMO. So people look at figures, they do it on a piece of paper, on a spreadsheet, they calculate the numbers and they just work out, oh, it'll give us a valuation of X based on the formula we were just talking about right now. But actually they don't even know if they're gonna be able to get a HMO type commercial valuation mortgage for that particular property. So some of the reasons that that doesn't happen is because uh, let's say you've got a six bedroom HMO and it's got four en suites uh, upstairs and the two ground floor ones share maybe one bathroom. How easy would it be to turn that property back to a regular house? Well, actually quite easily, um, you know, there's, uh, you'd remove the beds from the bedroom to the ground floor, put a sofa in, put a dining table in, hey presto, it's not that different from a family house. So this is the re one of the reasons why you may not be eligible to a HMO valuation because a surveyor will look at it and say, well, it's quite easy to convert this back. So why would somebody pay you a premium? Remember we were talking about say 250,000 pounds for the regular house and 300,000 pounds as a commercial valuation in the example earlier on. Why would somebody pay you the extra 50,000 pounds when it's very easy for you to purchase a property for, for less and convert it yourself. So a premium is what makes it more desirable because it's something you can't replicate or copy very easy. And another case where you can get HMO mortgages much easier, where its planning classification has changed or it's in a place where there's limited amount of supply, you can't get into that market very easily. Article 4 is a great example of this. Once Article 4 has been applied to an area, that means new HMOs is restricted coming into the market. So the ones are already there, they have a, a premium, a higher value. So getting commercial valuation on those properties is much, much easier because it's already in an area where it's difficult to start others. Another way to do this is to rather than have say a three, four or five bedroom HMO, you have a seven bedroom HMO. And the reason for that is because it changes its planning classification. And if you're interested in learning more about licensing and planning, I've got specific HMO videos on this and also about the running costs as well. We'll link them down in the description below. So after this video, make sure you check that out as well. But by moving it into a seven bedroom uh, HMO, or when we talk about bedrooms, essentially we're talking about a number of people living in the property. So a seven person HMO, what that does, it changes the planning classification to sui generis. That means it's now in a class of its own. And although it might look like the house next door, but it has a separate and different planning use, which also massively increases the chance of you being able to get commercial valuation on that particular property. So these are a few examples of how you can increase the certainty of being able to get a HMO valuation, a commercial valuation, valuation rather than end up with a bricks and mortar because there's so many people and you see this a lot on social media people talk about oh, I had my HMO valuation but they downvalued it it was much lower they only gave me a bricks and mortar valuation and the reason for that is because they're missing this and they don't really understand how those valuations work and where they will apply them and where they won't because remember what the surveyor is doing is valuing that property for the bank to saying yes I believe it's worth this amount of money and if you're lending money against it and if you ever have to repossess it and sell it you'd be able to achieve that figure and and if these figures are just random numbers that people have picked out of thin air, it's not going to work. They're not going to be able to get the money back and the bank is more likely to sue the surveyor who gave that figure in the first place. So there needs to be some science behind how this works and this is really the bit most people miss.
It's all well and good talking about the theoretical side of HMO commercial valuations, but it'd be much more useful if I apply it to a real life situation. So let me share with you the numbers on our most recent one that we've done. This was literally in the last few weeks that we've completed our breakdown, the numbers. So this is a property that we purchased for 249,000 pounds. It's a three story Victorian uh, end terrace house, no different from many of the others that we tend to use for this type of purpose as a HMO. We've converted it to a six bedroom HMO, very high spec and it's about £120,000 of spend that we've done on that property. So that takes our total figures to about £369,000 in terms of acquiring the property and the money that we've spent converting it, getting up and running, getting it furnished, ready for the tenants to move in. We've got some financing costs on that as well but I'll kind of keep that separate for the moment just to keep this simple. Then now when we've done our recent valuation, the way the valuation has worked is we look at what's the rent that that property is generating. And those rooms are really nice quality rooms. We're generating about 700 pounds on average per room. So I'm just checking my figures here. We've got a uh, rent coming in of 4,170 pounds for those six rooms, which is just under 700 pounds a room. So that means over a year, we are generating over 50,000 pounds. In fact, 50,040 pounds to be precise. So that's our gross rent that that six bedroom house is now generating for us. Now, of course, we've got some operating costs on that, as I mentioned before, gas, electric, water, council tax, TV license, cleaners, gardeners, internet, you know, all these things, and management of those properties as well. So there's a cost that we need to apply to that. Now, generally, when surveyors are doing this, they will use a figure in the range of between 15 to 25% of cost, depending on the type of house and how you run them. So we have hundreds of rooms that we manage around Birmingham, so we've got very good costings on typically how much this is. So for this specific property, our costs coming at about 10,000, 370 pounds, which is ballpark about 20%. So when you take those costs off the 39 odd thousand pound a year that we're generating, sorry, that's left with 39,000 pounds. So that's the net figure. So once we've taken all the gross rent, we've taken these costs off, we're left with about 39,000 pounds as our net profit. So as I mentioned earlier, if it was purchased for cash, that's what we'd be putting in our pocket. Now, of course, the reason we're doing this commercial valuation because we're taking a mortgage out on the property and we want to get the best valuation we possibly can. So in this particular location, the surveyor has used a yield of 7.8%. So what that means is they take that 39,000 pound and they say this will generate a yield of 7.8%. And when you translate that back, that works out to be 507,000 pound. And that's the valuation figure that we've achieved. So we purchased a property for 249,000 pound and we've ended up with a valuation of 507,000 pounds, significantly higher than what we started, in fact, more than double. Now, when we apply for our mortgage or when we've taken the mortgage, in this one we've already completed this process, but the mortgage lender will look at that and say, right, if it's worth 507,000, the surveyor is happy with that, we'll give you 75% of its value. So 75% of that was 380,000 pound and 250 pounds. So 380,250 pounds is how much the bank is prepared to lend against that property, which is 75% of its value. So that means we are cashing out about 11,250 pounds. So what that means is our original 369,000 pounds spend has come back to us plus about 11,000 pounds. So when you look at that, we've now ended up with a house where effectively we've got no money left in it, but it's still generating us a profit each month. How much is that profit? Well, our mortgage costs on that will be about 581 pounds a month. Uh, that's worked out 4.99%, that's the rate on this particular product. But depending on the product, they tend to be ballpark about the same. So over the year, that's 18,972 pounds is what we're paying as mortgage costs, interest only mortgage costs on this new mortgage that we've now got on the property. So when you take that off our initial uh, net rent of 39,000, we are still left with in excess of 20,000 pounds a year profit on that property. So not only have we got all our cash back out of it, we own a house for free effectively, we're generating 20,000 pounds a year net profit, and we've still got equity in the property of about 126,000 pounds. Now, if you just let that sink in for a moment, this is why HMOs and commercial valuations is such a desirable strategy. Not only do you get massive cash flow each month, you are building assets for the long term and that have got equity in those uh, as well. So a very quick tip for you uh, to do this in a very easy way, because not everybody's a numbers person. And I, look, I don't remember all these numbers. I have to glance at the screen to make sure I don't get any mistakes. I'm sharing this with you. But a very simple way to do it, if you like a back of an envelope type calculation, is you can look at the gross rent for the year. 
that's how much total rent we get. So in this example, I said it's about £50,000 a year rent that we're collecting on that house, and you simply multiply it by 10. It's a very crude calculation, but that would be £500,000, not far off what we've just uh, calculated anyway. And another crude example that you can use is what we call a unit value. And a unit value is how much is it worth per room? So typically in this area, we value at around 75-ish thousand pounds or thereabouts, depend obviously on the quality of the, uh, quality of the property. So at 75,000 pound a unit times six units, i.e. six rooms, that's 450,000 pounds. Again, a very quick and nice, easy way to do it. It's not accurate, but it gives you a ballpark of where it is that you'll probably end up. Hey, look, I know this video had lots of numbers. I hope you find this useful and you enjoy this content. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video.